one of the mysteries that's puzzled the human mind for a wee while now has been the concept of reincarnation, which is simply a Latin word which means to take on the flesh again. Have you ever had deja vu? You know that feeling that what you're currently doing is something that you've already done before? It's a fairly common occurrence that science still can't fully explain. Now imagine that instead of having that feeling of deja vu for a brief moment, that you have the overwhelming feeling that you remember an entire life that you've lived before. Hi folks, I'm Johnny and welcome to The Oddest. Today we're going to have a wee look at a case that is probably the closest we will get to actual proof of reincarnation. Join me now as we delve into the reincarnated lives of the Pollock sisters. Karma is a concept practiced by the followers of Buddhism and Hinduism and essentially means that your actions in this life can be carried forward to the next. So you better be good so you are rewarded in the next life. If you're a particular douchebag to people then there's every chance that you'll be reincarnated as a goat. Some religions believe that if a soul goes through this cycle enough times, all the while leveling up from the previous life, this will lead to your eventual ascension into, well, heaven. Having attained true enlightenment and deserving your place next to God or gods. The concept of advancing in this way, you know, from life to life, comes with the rule that, well, you can't remember any of your past lives. Awfully convenient, isn't it? There's a very popular practice called hypnotic regression, whereby a subject is placed under hypnosis and have the uncanny ability to recall, sometimes in astounding detail, who they were in a past life. The funny thing is, the majority of these therapies often result in people being all sorts of famous and wondrous people in a previous life. You'll never get someone saying that they were Mike the homeless guy from around the corner. You know, they should keep some sort of hypnosis database online where they can cross-reference these claims. So if a particular subject is like, yes, I can see it now. I was John Lennon in a previous life. The practitioner can check and say, uh, nope. So far, 47 people have said they are John Lennon, so there's 47 John Lennons, but no one has claimed to be Brian the Bin Collector. As I said before, the idea and practice of reincarnation originates in Eastern religions, so it's pretty bizarre that one of the most compelling cases ever documented originates in England, in a wee place called Hexham. Now, we've been there before in a previous video, one that I'm sure none of you have watched. Where was I? Yeah, right. In Hexham. It's May of 1957. 11-year-old Joanna Pollock and her younger sister, 6-year-old Jacqueline, were on their way to church with their friend Anthony when they were struck by an erratic driver. The three children were simply walking along the street when a car left the roadway and sadly took the three innocent lives. It was later discovered that the driver of said vehicle was a deranged woman under the influence of drugs. She had purposefully driven into the group of kids because she had been forcibly separated from her own children. Following the deaths of the sisters, their parents John and Florence were naturally devastated. I mean, I can only imagine the grief that they must have felt. That day, the world crumbled. John Pollock, the girl's father, had a long-standing interest and belief in reincarnation and held on to the fact that he was convinced that the girls would be reborn into the family as twins. Well, grief is a funny thing, and I'm sure if John or any parent were going around making such claims, that most, if not all people, would be understanding and simply reassure John that he may well be right, all the while behind closed doors thinking he was batshit crazy. But what if John was right? What if he was bang on the money? The following year, Florence fell pregnant again, and although early scans showed that it was a lone pregnancy, in October 1958, she gave birth to, can you guess, twin girls. Oft, I mean, can you imagine the smug look on John's face? I would never let anyone live that down. Every time I was in the village, I would be like, ha ha, I told you, in your face. It's worth noting that there was no history of twins on either side of the Pollock family tree. In any case, the two Pollocks were now four again. How lovely. 
the twin girls were healthy and they called them Gillian and Jennifer. Jennifer was born with a birthmark on her waist and a white line on her forehead. Jacqueline had been born with a birthmark in the exact same place and when she was three years old she had fallen and cut her head on a bucket leaving a white scar in the exact same spot on her head. Jennifer was believed to be the reincarnation of her deceased sister Jacqueline and so through the process of elimination and Sherlock Holmes-esque deduction that would make Gillian the reincarnation of Joanna. To make things a wee bit easier for all of us, when I refer to the dearly departed Joanna and Jacqueline, you'll see this happening here. Conversely, when I talk about the twins, Jennifer and Gillian, it'll be here. As they grew, Gillian would take on a more motherly role towards her twin, Jennifer, just as Joanna had done so previously with her sister, Jacqueline. Remember that Joanna was the older sister and was 11 at the time of her passing, with her young sister, Jacqueline, being only six. Things got truly bizarre when the twins started talking. Both girls developed a strong and irrational fear of cars. In one instance, whilst travelling roadside with their mother, one of the twins let out a scream and started shouting that the car was coming for them. There were also times where Florence would witness the girls having some odd conversations. She recalls at one point Gillian touching Jennifer's head and saying, the blood is coming out of your eyes and that's where the car hit you. Their father confirmed that younger sister Jacqueline had been bandaged above her eyes when he went to identify her body. So, as well as seemingly having knowledge of the events that ended the lives of their sisters, they also had knowledge of the sisters' lives prior to the accident. They knew things that were impossible to know. At one point, the twins were looking for their toys. When Florence asked them what toys they were talking about, they were able to accurately describe toys they didn't actually own. To the amazement of Florence, they were describing toys that were previously owned by Joanna and Jacqueline. These toys were placed into a sealed box by their mother after their passing and filed away in the loft. Out of curiosity, John retrieved the box and gave it to the twins. Miraculously, the girls shared out the toys as they pertained to their would-be counterparts, with Joanna's toys being taken by Gillian and Jacqueline's toys having been taken by Jennifer. They knew all the names of the toys, names which their sisters had given them years prior. They knew which toys were Christmas gifts and which ones weren't. When the twins were four years old, the family returned to Hexham, a place they certainly had not been since the twins were babies. Astonishingly, the girls were familiar with various parts of the village. They knew the way to the park with the swings, a regular playground for Joanna and Jacqueline. They even pointed out the school where their sisters had attended. Once they were at school, skills began to develop. It was obvious that Gillian could naturally hold a pencil and became adept quickly at writing. Jennifer, on the other hand, was having trouble learning to write and would resort to clenching the pencil in a fist. Older sister Joanna loved to write from the youngest of ages. Was she was able to hold her pencil correctly, whereas Jacqueline never really got used to holding a pencil and would resort to holding it in a fist grip. On one occasion, John would wear a particular smock or coat, only to be asked by Jennifer, why are you wearing mummy's coat? See, Florence used to wear this smock back in the day, certainly prior to the twins' birth and the sister's subsequent death. She would wear the clothing item when she would go out to deliver milk. This would have been witnessed by Jacqueline at the time. After Jennifer asked John about the coat, she got annoyed with her sister Gillian, as Gillian had claimed not to know what Jennifer was referring to. However, this would make sense if the reincarnation story is to be believed. You see, remember Gillian is supposed to be the reincarnation of the older sister Joanna, which means that she would have been at school on the days that her younger sibling would have been at home and witnessing her mummy wearing said coat. Due to all of these remarkable occurrences, John's belief in his daughter's reincarnation was absolute. Florence, well, not so much. She still didn't completely disbelieve, but her conviction was not as absolute as her husband's. Joanna had a favourite saying. She would say, I'll never be a lady. Which, if you think about it, that's fairly chilling. Soon the story of the reincarnated twins would circulate the usual papers and stuff, and soon garnered the attention of psychologist Dr Ian Stevenson. He was authoring a book called Children Who Remember Previous Lives, and so was keen to speak to the Pollock family. 
As the girls grew older, these occurrences became less and less common, up to the point where the girls were around six years old. They stopped talking about it altogether. Could this be because at the tender age of six is when Sister Jacqueline's life ended, thus her memories? Or could it be part of the whole reincarnation thing that around that age, memories become less and less to allow for the soul to start afresh? So what's your thoughts on this? Do you believe in reincarnation? Do you believe that the Pollock twins are reincarnations of their deceased sisters? John Pollock was a practicing Catholic. Now, reincarnation is certainly not part of the Catholic faith. John believed that his daughters were taken from him in such a horrific manner because he had angered God by believing in a concept created by Eastern religions. I promised myself when I started this channel that I wouldn't be discussing religion. So let's just say he wasn't meant to believe in something according to his religion. He did. He believed he was punished, but yet he also believed that they had to die in order to prove that reincarnation exists. So doesn't that mean that he's still pissing off God again? I don't know. Also, if you believe in something so strongly, of course you're going to see that manifest. This is called confirmation bias. Basically, you see what you want to see. Everything that supports your belief, you take as solid proof in that thing. Any evidence to the contrary gets kicked out. Therefore, the evidence supporting your bias will always be present and will just make your belief stronger. Back in the day, I used to be a close-up magician and more often than not, after performing a particular routine or trick, I would overhear someone telling another person what they had just witnessed. And in almost every case, they would greatly exaggerate the miracle that I had just performed earlier. And in some cases, they would miss out important parts of the routine. This is primarily because we are very prone to exaggeration. Psychologically, we want to convey our excitement. And when retelling such things to others that were not able to witness the act firsthand, you now have the task of getting them as excited as you were. But this is impossible. It's the famous saying, you had to be there. So this is pertinent with the reincarnation story bearing in mind that the witnesses to these seemingly miraculous events are the very people that wanted them so much to be true. So what about the twins then? How did they seem to know so much about their previous lives? Well, an objective onlooker might suggest that they had simply overheard the parents or grandmother talking about it, or they may have seen photographs. The parents did come out and say that they never spoke about Joanna and Jacqueline to the twin girls, which of course would make this case interesting. But then children are sharp. They may well have not spoken to the kids about this directly, but kids are sneaky and often listen to conversations or inadvertently pick up on certain things. A great example of this is a story from my own childhood. To this day, I have a vivid memory. I was around four or five years old. My parents had took me to nearby Stirling Castle. My father picked me up so I could see over the battle mounts of the castle and on the hill below is Kings Park Cemetery. I had made an eerie comment which stunned my parents when I said, Look, that's where Grandpa is. Now, there was no way of me knowing that that's where Grandpa was buried, as he died 20 years before I was even born, and it was never discussed in my presence or told to me directly. But here is where my story gets really spooky. My parents never took me to Stirling Castle. I've never looked over the battle mounts and made such comments. When my sister was four or five, my parents took her to Stirling Castle, and they held her up to see the battle mounts, and they mentioned to her that that's where Grandpa is buried. The strange thing is, this happened 10 years before I was even born, and to this day, I can see the memory. I can even remember hearing my mum saying, look Johnny, see the bats flying. I remember looking up excited to see the bats, but unable to see them. I felt guilty by telling my mum, uh, yeah, I can see them. I couldn't see them. So what happened here? Well, at some point in my young life, I've overheard my sister and my parents talking about the night that they went to the castle. My young imagination tried to picture the scene in my head and in turn, as the years progressed, it formed a false memory. Anywho, these are my own thoughts on this. If you've got this far in my video, please let me know what you think in the comment section below. So that's that for this video. I super appreciate you guys for watching. Stay safe out there. Watch out for the bats. 
But above all else, remember, keep smiling.